This might be the most underrated lens you can get for your Sony full frame cameras, and it's only 50 bucks. What's good people, today I want to talk to you guys about the infamous 16-55 to APS-C kit lens and why I don't think it's nearly as bad as many people make it seem. I first used this lens back in 2016 when I first bought my a6300, but once I started learning more about bokeh and aperture, I sold it and replaced it with the Sigma 35mm 1.4. Since then I've used a number of different lenses, including upgraded my body to a full frame body, so the 16 50 is kind of just a distant memory at this point, until earlier this year. For his birthday, I bought my dad an a6300 with a kit lens, and it made me curious. Is it really as bad as everyone makes it seem? Now this isn't going to be an overly technical review, it's going to kind of just be my opinions on what people are saying are the downfalls of this lens, and we'll see where that goes. We can start off with the main thing that everybody says is the biggest problem with this lens, the sharpness. Obviously the kit lens is supposed to be the cheapest lens you can get for your camera just so you can get out there and start taking pictures. It's not supposed to be anything fancy, nothing too sharp, nothing too bright, just get you out there and with that being said the glass inside of it is not the best quality so that's going to affect the sharpness of course but that can be a good thing if you watch camera reviews or lens reviews on youtube or pretty much anywhere you hear a lot that the sensors that are coming out these days are overly sharp or they're too perfect and that people end up having to put diffusion filters over them not only for the the cool bloom effect that you see over here but even to just cut down on the sharpening and to make it look a little bit more cinematic and real life well, there's no need for that with the kit lens. It's already not sharp. Sony did that from the factory. Just put it on, No, you don't need the filter. Just put it on and shoot. And you have that soft, cinematic, not sharp look. The next complaint is usually its aperture. The difference between f3.5 and f2.8 is only two thirds of a stop of light. But the difference between 2.8 and f5.6 is two full stops of light, meaning there's four times as much light coming in at 2.8 than there is at 5.6, which means you're definitely gonna have to bump up your ISO to get the same type of exposure, and then you'll end up getting more grain in your image. But that can also be a good thing. What if you wanna shoot in a well-lit location? Outside, in the sun, for example. F1.8 or even F2.8 is gonna be way too bright, even at your lowest ISO settings. Sure, if you're shooting photos, you can just crank your shutter speed, but in video, if you're following the 180 degree shutter rule, which you should be, it's gonna be way too bright. I'm at F5.6, I'm not even at 2.8. So to get to proper exposure, I need to go all the way down to F10. ISO 100, 150th shutter speed. So you have one of two options. You could either do what I just did and stop down and lose your blurry background, or you could buy a variable ND filter, filter which will which you another 100, 200, 300 dollars even on top of the new lens that you got just to get a darker image so you can keep the blurry background. Up to you. All I'm saying is there are taxes to the benefits that come from having better lenses. One extra thing I don't think gets talked enough about with this kit lens is its size and specifically its size for its focal range. I'm currently using the Tamron 20 to 40 millimeter and I love it. I think it's one of the most useful focal ranges and it's a great compact full frame lens. But there's one instance where the kit lens shines over this lens. Events. Okay. My family loves sports, whether it be football or basketball, soccer, so whatever. But whenever we go to games, I always want my camera to take pictures, take videos, everything. But the issue is that there's always a size limit because they don't want professional photography at these games. So they usually limit the size of the lens you can bring to three inches. Now they don't actually bring out a ruler. What they normally do is they just use their ID cards, hold it up to the back of the camera, see if the lens is longer than the ID card. And if it is, they don't let it in. Insert the kit lens. It's like an inch and a half long. Security doesn't even look twice. If you have a full frame camera, you get a 16 millimeter to 75 millimeter equivalent. And then if you have clear image zoom on top of that, it goes to 212.5 millimeters, which is amazing. It lets you get shots like this, like this. And even like this. Can't do that with your 70 to 200. You wouldn't even get in. Yo, future editor Kyle here. I just created a playlist full of all the vlogs that I've made using made this kit lens. So click in the top right corner. I, I don't know which one it is. Um, if you guys want to see more example footage, that's all. All in all, I think the kit lens gets a bad rap. It's dismissed and replaced before it even gets a chance to prove its worth. Personally, I think it's way more useful than pretty much everyone gives it credit for. And I think it deserves a spot in your bag and in mine. I mean, it's 50 bucks. And that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully 
I convinced you guys maybe to not immediately sell your kit lens and maybe give it a chance. Leave a like and subscribe if you guys thought this was helpful or entertaining. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can know better. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hello. I'm Marielle. I'm 24 years old. <laughs> Have a nice day.